Hey guys, what's up? Once again, I played a Blitz tournament, came third, 95 players in the tournament. Um, very interesting. I played a decisive last round and I played against uh, Ukrainian FM and I opted for Queen H5 Petzer's opening. Uh, I remember his facial expression. It was like, who the hell do you think I am? And he started shaking with his hand, like uh, with his head, like uh, I'm gonna crush you now and show you who's the boss. Well, it didn't happen. So let me just show you what happened in the game. I played e4. He went for e5. I played queen h5. Of course, I'm threatening the pawn on e5. He played knight c6. I always play bishop c4. You know how much I like wayward queen or patzer is opening or call it early queen attack you just threaten mate in one and after g6 you just go with the queen f3 threatening mate on f7 the guy went for knight f6 and here i'm very afraid of this 94 early jumps because my queen is kind of in the middle of the center and they just have to protect it so i played 92 he went for d6 i played knight bc3 he went for the bishop g7, absolutely normal. I played d3. When I played d3, I want to uh, pin the knight on f6 by playing bishop g5 and threatening some knight e5 ideas afterwards. He played h6, preventing this bishop g5, and at the same time, hoping for some knight a5 to go after my light square bishop. That's what the majority of these guys do. And they think they, they just did a great job, but I don't care about the light square bishop. I play h3 with the idea g4 g5 and trying to take advantage of the kind of misplaced knight on f6 at the moment he played knight a5 which i absolutely find reasonable and uh, which pretty much reminds me on Ray lopez and those type of structures and positions where you just should be very happy when you play knight a5 winning the light square bishop anyways i said okay no big deal i played g4 threatening g5 if if you allow me to play g5 for example you just do something doesn't matter what then it's dangerous then i'm the one who's having an initiative he took on c4 and played bishop e6 threatening my pawn on c4 i played b3 solidifying myself but i'm very happy that i have a very solid pawn structure and at the same time i want to place my dark square bishop somewhere make long castle and possibly take advantage of the open d file that's exactly what happened in the game the guy went for queen d7 i played bishop e3 during the game i thought should i go for bishop a3 or bishop e3 followed by c5 turns out that afterwards uh, i checked on the engine it's better to place the bishop on e3 and i did it he played b6 to forever stop my c5 idea reminds me on butcher the sicilian kinds of things and i played long castle i played long castle uh, placing my rook on the open d file and uh, going for some x rays against the queen on d7 he instantly did a5 that's a very interesting move a very interesting move to come up with initiative he just wants to even at a cost of exchange go with a4 break on the a file and somehow take advantage of uh, possibly weak queen side so it's a pretty much typical queen side uh, uh, exchange sacrifice so i stopped that with a4 and i was absolutely happy with such a solid pawn structure he went for queen c6 and i played rook d2 from this point onwards i start I started to think of uh, doubling my rooks on the d file going with the knight b5 and threatening something somewhere knight d6 rook d6 knight c7 bishop b6 i just realized that i had lots of uh, initiative here he played knight g8 which is very smart move i've seen it once in one book uh, somebody played a similar type of the game and when he went for that knight g8 97 96 94 plan it was good but in this case i had a knight on e2 and bishop on e3 even these double rooks on the d file so he can just dream of the d4 control i played knight d5 just in time because i feel kind of bothered by his bishop on e6 he played bishop d5 rook takes d5 and played knight e7 uh, for example here engine says take by pawn and fix the pawn structure no i don't want to do that then i don't have the d file open 
so I just decided to take my rook. He played knight e7, and I brought my rook all the way to d2. And I'm just hoping for doubling my rooks after rook h to d1. I did it, and he now had problems. Uh, he wished he could castle long queen side, but f7 is hanging, so he first had to. And it's a pretty smart move, playing queen e6, removing from the potential uh, danger, because I had those rooks in the d file, over protecting f7 pawn and preparing himself for a queen side castle. I played knight c3 and he played long castle. Here I thought about doing knight b5 and those kinds of direct things. I just played h4. And my initial point was to play h5 and to kind of provoke him to do g5, in which case he could never play any f5. He played king b8, and I believe it was one of, a, one of the reasons for his loss in this game. I instantly recognized how could I break his pawn structure. I broke with c5, and I'm proud of this move, because all of a sudden his queen side is just breaking. He captured, I recaptured my bishop. He cannot take because of hanging rook on d8. Played knight c6. Now he threatens to take my bishop because knight on c6 defends the rook. And I brought my bishop all the way back. During the game, for a moment, I thought, what if he plays knight d4? Nothing. I just bring the queen back to g2. I want to reroute my queen via f1 to a6 and uh, to have like uh, decisive uh, queen side attacking chances. And engine says I'm winning. Also, I want to undermine his knight with f4. I, I would play queen g2 followed by queen f1. I'm not sure if I would undermine this knight. Because I would be pretty much obsessed with the mating attack. He played knight b4. I played knight b5. And I didn't do knight b5 because of anything else. But because I recognized here a very nice idea. He played bishop f8. His idea bishop f8 was to defend... Uh, a pawn on d6. So I brought my queen back uh, to e2 and I want to have my queen on b5. He played c6 and that's pretty much what I expected and that's why he brought that bishop uh, all the way back to f8. And now I played a very nice move. I played knight to a3. I want to have my knight on c4 but I'm also threatening bishop b6 at the moment and he's just collapsing. He played king c7, and after knight c4, he resigned. He can't stop. Knight a5, bishop b6. If rook b8, knight d6. What a great win with the Patsers opening. And you just have to admit, once again, I made a great game. Uh, oh, and I, I told that to Grandmaster Ivic, current Serbian champion. He couldn't believe it. I have 76% with the white pieces with this opening. And... Uh, there are going to be like lots of games like this in the future, so enjoy the content. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys.